I'm Kat Manzella, and I'm the executive director of Kisses for Kate. And I was Kate God's, Kate's godmother. And um, I started Kisses for Kate while Kate was under treatment. And we had originally started it to try to raise some funds for her transplant. Um, Kisses for Kate came out of an idea, a thought, uh, while I was staying at the hospital with her so that her mom could go home and see her other kids. And I would stay sometimes on the weekend with Kate and we would talk about things and um, she would tell me about the things that she wanted to do when she got out of the hospital. And one of those things was that she wanted me to create a princess room for her, like the one I had for my daughter. And uh, I told her that when she came home from transplant, she would have a beautiful princess room to come home to. And that's really where we started to uh, think about what we were gonna do after transplant. And so we started selling the uh, Kisses for Kate bracelets um, when she was getting ready to go to her transplant to try to raise you know, the money necessary to help cover the medical expenses. As it was when Kate had her transplant, it would end up being um, not effective. She did not respond to it, and it was very, um, it was very soon thereafter when we were told that she would have no more treatment. And so uh, we lost Kate. And um, one of the things that Kate had shown me while she was at Duke was her beautiful beads of courage. And she had told me that they didn't have beads of courage at Brenner and she wanted to know what she was gonna do about it. You know, how am I gonna get my beads when I go back to Brenner? Uh, they don't have them there. And so I had told her that we would see about trying to get the beads of courage for her when she went back and she shouldn't worry herself about that. So shortly after Kate passed, um, I started thinking about maybe some of the things that people needed at Brenner. You know, having, having gone through that with her, with Susan, with Joe, her parents, um, having spent so many nights there, um, understanding what can happen, you know, to your body physically when you're sitting in a chair night after night. Um, so one of the programs that we established, the first one we established over at, at, at Brenner was the Beads of Courage program. We brought it to Brenner and now we have um, over 149 children that we sponsor in the program. And um, it's really important for these children to be able to tell their stories and their, their, their journey through this beautiful visual of their treatment. And uh, I, I can't imagine having to go through treatment without you know, something to show for it, something that they can say, this is what I did, look, look, at, look at all of the things that I've been through. And the Beads of Courage are such a beautiful way to give a visual to people that don't understand what these children go through. I was diagnosed with ALL leukemia on December 23rd of last year. And we found out about Kisses for Kate, I think, the day after um, when we got one of the bears. And then shortly after, we found out about Beads of Courage. And I think those are great because it can take really negative situations like surgeries and getting port access and things like that and make them into a positive outlook of I get something out of it and you can be as creative as you want and really can do a lot with it yeah I think Beads of Courage helps to explain a lot to them because people who haven't been in that situation really don't understand what a lot of it means so when they can see something and help visualize it, it helps them to understand a lot more. She has some really beautiful, beautiful beads that she's gotten for some really tough tops. And then just important things. The first bead I got was the, I call the turtle shell bead. And that was for the actual diagnosis. Um, this one I got during 
high dose methotrexate treatment. So I had lots of mouth sores and I really couldn't shut my mouth. So I got that one. And then that happened again. Um, and we stayed in the hospital for about three weeks and I got the geckos. And I got the apple when I started homebound, which is basically homeschool but in hospital. And this one I got during um, a lumbar puncture when I was awake, but they missed six times before they were able to finish. And then I got my Aflac duck when we started Beads of Courage. And I just think it's cute. Shortly thereafter, we also saw the need for uh, another program that was dear to my heart. Uh, when Kate was diagnosed with um, leukemia, she was very little, she was three years old. She did not want to wear the hospital gown. She said that, you know, princesses did not wear ugly things and that was definitely ugly and she wasn't gonna put it on. And she just flat, flat out said, I'm not wearing that. So with the help of a friend, my friend Jane, we came up with a pattern for a little princess gown. And um, it's like a hospital gown, but it's made out of princess fabric. So Kate was one of the best dressed little girls on the ninth floor. And she had several different patterns and she even had a zebra one and she had a cupcake one and anything that she wanted we made it out of that fabric. And so she did not wear the hospital gown. She wore her gown, her princess gowns. And it was really the only decision that she was allowed to make on a daily basis. When you're that little and you're told that you have to do this or take that or go there or be poked here, um, go through all of the transfusions, go through all of the chemo, feeling sick, when you can actually look at something and say, this is what I wanna do, it's an incredible, empowerment for a child to be able to make that kind of decision when they're not allowed to make decisions about anything else. And so the Gowns for Girls program started when we realized that there were other little girls who wanted to wear beautiful things while they were um, stuck at the hospital for day after day after day. And so what we did was we have volunteers who sew gowns for us who are wonderful, wonderful volunteers and they have a pattern and they send us their gowns and we package them and we make sure that every child that wants one has one and it really doesn't matter how many they want as long as they're in hospital and clinic they can have a gowns for girls the third one was the pillows for parents and that came out of a conversation that we had with one of the moms at the mom's makeover day and uh, we asked the mom what we could do for her. What was, was there anything that we could do for her to make her more comfortable or was there any need that she had? And she said, you know, I would really love to have something to sleep on that would help me not feel so horrible in the morning. Um, I knew exactly what she was talking about. Uh, those hospital benches are very hard. They're not meant to be slept on. Um, especially day after day, week after week, and some of these kids are there for that long. And so the mattress actually came out of an idea, a thought of the memory foam mattresses, and we partnered with Industries for the Blind, who helped us create our own pillows for parents, uh, custom made with antibacterial fabric, and they're made out of a wonderful, comfortable foam, and they fit to the exact measurements of the benches there, and each family gets one, and they're allowed to take it with them. Um, but the overall program and, and how it supports a family, and, and not just takes care of her needs, but takes care of our needs as well. Um, the Pillars for Parents is, is just a perfect example. Nobody really understands, and, and We've actually gone so far as, as to talk to the doctors and challenge them. 
you really want to know what it's like for a family live here for a week um, live in our shoes where you take the, the simple things for granted you know just being able to get up in the morning and get a cup of coffee and take a shower where you get your comfortable bed at night and your blankets and you sleep through the night as a parent with a child that that has this disease you don't have that luxury so you literally take every small thing that you can and hold on to it dearly um, just being able to have the pillow and stretch it out on what some people call a couch what some people call a bed and and be able for just 20 25 minutes be able to try to sleep is is something that you can't describe um, just to be able to let your body relax for even this short amount of time and how much further you're going to be able to go from that and that's uh, that's one of the things that we take from it is this is just a little bit of home um, when Savannah was first diagnosed we were in the hospital 30 days and that started on December 23rd um, and then my wife and I and I remember asking the doctors can we go home have Christmas and then come back nope you're here you're here to stay and you're gonna be here for 30 days so just being able to have something familiar something comfortable during that 30 day stay is, is just something that you can't even describe. So I think, you know, with a lot of our families, they are struggling financially before they ever come to us and are diagnosed with cancer. You know, people just making ends meet basically. And so when you have a child that's diagnosed with cancer, your whole world changes. A lot of times one of the parents is unable to work um, if it's a single parent, that person, you know, their entire income is gone at that point. So it's, you know, just a complete turnaround from what they're used to. And if you're just barely making it before, this can just make it where you absolutely cannot make ends meet. And so it's imperative that we have organizations like Kisses for Kate that can come in and, you know, help immediately. A lot of organizations take weeks, even months, to come up with any type of assistance. And Kisses for Kate is always, you know, right there, able to help in that instance. And that's so important for people that can't pay their rent for the month or can't pay their light bill. You have a child with cancer and you can't afford food for the month. I mean, those are things that, you know, I would hate to have to deal with. And it's just nice to know that we have an organization in the community that is right there and can help, you know, really at a moment's notice. If I send them an email that day, they get back to me that afternoon usually. And so I just think it's so important and it really makes a huge difference in these people's lives. My name is Stacy Peterson. I work at Brenner Children's Hospital. I'm a child life specialist on the pediatric hematology oncology floor. And my job is to help children cope with being in the hospital. When they come into the hospital for the first time, it's a very scary place with lots of strangers and they're having procedures and treatments done to them that are unknown and are scary. Um, and we try to help explain things to them by using play um, and help promote their normal development um, while they're there at the hospital. We are very grateful to Kisses for Kate and all their support over the years. Um, they have helped us support not only the patient but also the family through their wonderful programs like the Pillows for Parents and the Toiletry Items, um, Beats of Courage and Gowns for Girls, um, in addition to their financial assistance for many of our families. And then we also have volunteers who make the cuddles for kids, which are our bears. And uh, we try to make sure that every child on that floor has one of these bears and they can do anything they want with the bear. They can beat up on the bear, they can love on the bear, they can sleep with the bear, they can throw up on the bear if they want to. Um, that bear is for them and them alone. The bears are just, um, that's just a little extra. We have volunteers who um, sew the bears for us and um, it's just a wonderful thing to have. Sometimes these children, they, when they go to the hospital, they certainly don't expect to stay there. 
And so the bear is a way for them to just kind of latch onto something and, and it goes and it comes and it goes and it comes and it becomes one of their little best friends. And um, it's a wonderful thing for, it's just a little extra thing that we do for them. Um, our volunteers are amazing. We have um, our board, you know, consists of pretty much all moms who work and give up their free time to make sure that Kisses for Kate continues uh, to provide these programs for the kids. And, um, you know, with the help of uh, my partner Katie and, and the other ladies on, on, you know, on our permanent volunteer staff, um, we have been able to continue Kisses for Kate for the last four years and uh, we basically have the the main event which is our ball every year which is where we raise most of our funds um, that we provide you know that provides the assistance to these families um, when they are in these emergency situations like having the lights turned off or they don't have any food in their pantry or perhaps even um, Mortgages. Uh, we've we've also paid mortgages for people who are going into arrears. They've they've uh, they've come very close to foreclosure, and these are things that other organizations don't cover because it takes time for them to do it. But we have an incredible staff that we get together and we you know we have our intake process. We find out from the staff at the hospital what these needs are, and again, a lot of times by the time they get to us, it's because they're desperate and they need help. Um, they don't. This isn't something that they want to ask for, um, but a cancer diagnosis can be devastating financially to a family. And so they really do need assistance sometimes with the smallest of things, even getting to the hospital, um, a gas card. Some parents don't even have that to get to the hospital, and so we, we help them by providing gas for them. Um, but it couldn't be done without our volunteers, without our volunteers who sew the gowns, without our volunteers who actually um, make the bears for us. And, you know, the whole Pillows for Parents idea came out of a need that came out of a conversation when we were pampering some of the moms on the floor. And one of our volunteers, Laura, who had a connection with Industries for the Blind, and they make mattresses, and one thing led to another, and they were so wonderful that we were able to custom make these for the parents. So um, we are still 100% volunteer. We, all of our funds, all of the funds that are raised go to our kids, to our programs, um, to assist these families. And um, we love what we do. It's a lot of time. It takes a lot of sacrifice and time from our family. Um, we have some very patient children and husbands. Um, and they're always the muscle behind moving all of the things that we have to move and go to the places we have to go to make sure these kids get what they need. Um, but it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. It's a wonderful organization. Um, and we're gonna try to continue to do it as long as we can and uh, as long as these kids need us. And it's all in Kate's memory. <laughs>